Welcome to Defending Digital. I'm Chad Warner. Today, I'd like to share with you a few ways to increase the security and privacy of Apple's Safari browser. So when you're in the browser, you can go up to the menu bar here and then Safari and Preferences. And let me drag this over here. All right, so there are several tabs here. So we'll start here at the beginning. Uh, so the first one to look at is autofill. And this lets you autofill several types of information into Safari. Um, I prefer to use a password manager for this. So LastPass is the one that I use. There are several others, uh, but you can see I have that uh, just right up here in my browser. Uh, and that handles autofilling things like this securely. There's also search, and there are four searches to choose from by default. Um, DuckDuckGo is one that is uh, private by default. They don't do any tracking on searches, uh, unlike the other three. Uh, however, their results are not as good as what you're gonna get with Google. Um, so you just need to decide if the uh, privacy trade-off is worth it for the results that you're getting. Uh, then there are a few other options here. Um, so you have include search suggest search engine suggestions. Um, so the way Apple describes this is ask the search engine for search suggestions based on search terms you enter. The search engine may record your search terms. So I recommend disabling this just to give the search engine less of your data. Uh, then you have the smart search field, which is basically the address bar. That's just what Safari calls it, the smart search field. And uh, a few options here. So Safari suggestions, um, the way Apple describes this is uh, get Safari suggestions as you type in the smart search field. Safari search includes suggestions from the internet, iTunes, the App Store, movie showtimes, locations nearby, and more. And kind of same principle here. I recommend disabling that just to give Apple less of your data. Then you have enable quick website search. And this is described by Apple as record information about your searches within a website to expedite later searches on that site. And uh, I would just rather not do that just to uh, have less of my search activity be stored. Then you've got preload top hit in the background. Uh, what this does is um, loads a web page um, just based on what they think is gonna be the top hit kind of looking at your bookmarks, your browsing history, and just kind of predict where you're going to go. Um, so I just like to disable that to have more control over which pages are, are actually being loaded. Then you've got the security tab here. Uh, warn when visiting a fraudulent website. Now this does use Google's safe browsing um, to identify those sites. Um, so there is uh, some information that is uh, being sent by Apple to Google um, in order to look at that. Um, but the, the data that's sent is so minimal and um, it really is a good security feature to have. So I think the, the pros outweigh the cons there. I would, I would keep that enabled. Then you've got the privacy tab. Uh, so website tracking, um, good idea to prevent cross-site tracking. Um, this basically, uh, Apple describes this as some websites use third-party content providers. A third-party content provider can track you across websites to advertise products and services. With this option turned on, tracking data is periodically deleted unless you visit the third-party content provider. So definitely recommend enabling that. Uh, cookies and website data. Um, so here, I would not block all cookies. That's going to break how a lot of websites function. Um, you can manage website data, and what this does is show you um, various websites and what is stored. So is it cache? Is it cache and cookies? Um, what exactly is, uh, is being stored there? And you can select one of these and click remove, or if you uh, hold command, um, you can select multiple, or you can hold, click one and hold the shift and click a lower one, and that will highlight all of the ones that, that are within that range. Um, there's also a remove all button to uh, just <laughs> nuke everything. Um, so that would be a, a way that you can clear out um, data that you would like to. Uh, then you have Apple, an Apple Pay option here. So um, if you are using Apple Pay, then you have an option here to um, let websites check um, if you are using it. And then you, know, you still have to go through some extra steps to, to actually pay through Apple Pay, but lets them check. 
Um, so if you don't use Apple Pay, then you know just turn it off because why bother having it on? If you do use Apple Pay, you can uh, think about whether you want to um, have that on. You know, definitely is more convenient. Uh, then you've got websites, and here's there's a uh, pane on the left that lets you go through several options. Um, the the ones to look at here are camera, microphone, and location. Um, and this lets you control what websites can do um, with those things. So do they need to ask before they use it? Are they denied from using it? Or are they allowed to use it? Uh, so same type of thing uh, with each of these. And so you just want to make sure that uh, you're not giving permission to use those to any sites that you uh, don't intend to. All right, then you have extensions. So here you'll see extensions that you have installed. The checkbox uh, means that they're enabled. And um, you want to make sure that this is checked here, automatically update extensions from the Safari extensions gallery. So that should be checked there. Um, some extensions, uh, so I, I mentioned LastPass earlier, it's a uh, password manager um, that's served me really well for many years. Uh, and then uBlock Origin, uh, this is a um, filter or content blocker um, that's very customizable. It's, it's pretty advanced, so uh, may be overwhelming if uh, you're kind of new to uh, this stuff. Um, but that's, uh, that's an interesting one, uh, a helpful one there. Uh, okay, so those are some things to look at here in extensions. Um, a few other ways to use Safari, Safari uh, more securely and privately. So you've got the, uh, the address bar here, and you'll notice that I, I see a padlock. Um, here, which is showing that I have an encrypted connection uh, to the site. I could even go look at the certificate and, and check it out there. Um, so you do want to look for that if you're going to be entering any sensitive information, things like um, financial info, medical info, anything personally identifiable. Um, if you're on a site that does not have that, you'll notice it says not secure. And so you are uh, being warned about that. Uh, there's also an option for private browsing, and you can get to that with a uh, file new private window uh, and you'll now see private browsing is enabled the address bar here is dark um, so what it says is uh, as you can see keeps your browsing history private on all the tabs in this window so i, I could open additional tabs and, and those would all be private as well um, so this prevents safari from saving the pages that you visit your search history and autofill information so something worth doing when, uh, when you don't want those things saved within Safari. Um, something else to point out here is uh, other browsers uh, like Chrome and Firefox support hardware keys. Uh, I like the, uh, the YubiKey from Yubico. Uh, and this is a um, um, kind of a hardware token that can be used for two-factor authentication. Um, unfortunately, Safari does not support it. Um, I did find a unofficial extension that claims to support it, but I couldn't get it to work. So maybe it will work for you, but uh, that is kind of one downside right now to Safari is uh, doesn't have support for that. All right, so you can uh, find this guide at defendingdigital.com under the resources, security and privacy guides, uh, as well as learn a lot more about personal cybersecurity and online privacy.